some of the international conventions and organizations. The first organization over here is United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, that is UN said. Now, United Nations Conference on Environment and Development is also known as the Rio Summit. It was held in Rio and is also known as Earth Summit. It was held in 1992. Now, the issues addressed in this conference were production of toxic compounds, alternative sources of energy to replace the use of fossil fuel, new reliance on public transportation system in order to reduce vehicle emissions, and the growing scarcity of water. Now, the 1992 Earth Summit had four outcomes. The first one is UNFCC, and it has two major branches that is Kyoto Protocol and Copenhagen Accords. Then there was the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification. For biodiversity, we had the creation of CBD, that is Convention on Biodiversity. And for that, we have three legs, which are Cartagena Biosafety Protocols, Nagoya Genetic Resource Protocols, and IG targets. For sustainable developments, we have Agenda 21, Forest Principles, and Rio Declaration on Environment and Development. Now, let's look at the Convention on Biological Diversity, that is CBD, and United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. They were two legally binding of this agreement, that is, CBD and UNFCCC were two legally binding agreements that were reached upon during the Earth Summit itself. Now, Agenda 21 is a non binding action plan for United Nations related to sustainable development. The number 21 signifies the agenda for 21st century. Since 2015, sustainable development goals are included in Agenda 2030. Now, let's look at forest principles. It is a non legally binding authoritative statement of principles for a global consensus on management, conservation, development of all types of forest. It makes several recommendations for conservation and sustainable development of forestry. Now, let's move on to UNFCCC. Now, it was, as we saw that it was in the Earth Summit that it was conceived and it is the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. As a follow-up, the World Summit on Sustainable Development, that is Rio Plus 10, was held in 2002 in Johannesburg, South Africa. In 2012, the United Conference on Sustainable Development, that is Rio Plus 20, was held in Rio and is commonly known as Rio Earth Summit 2012. The UNFCC provides a framework for negotiation of specific international treaties, which are called protocols, that aim to set binding limits on the emissions of greenhouse gases. As of March 2019, UNFCCC has 197 parties. Now let's move on to Convention on Biological Diversity. Now, CBD is an internationally legally binding convention which recognized for the first time the need for conservation of biological diversity for the welfare of mankind. The agreement covers all ecosystem species as well as genetic resources. Now, the objectives of the convention include conservation, sustainable use, and sharing of the benefits in a fair and equi equitable manner. In the 10th meeting of Conference of Parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity held in Nagoya, IG, biodiversity targets were adopted for the period of 2011 and 20. Now, there are 20 targets which are awareness of biodiversity increased, habit, biodiversity values integrated, incentives reformed, sustainable production and consumption, habitat loss half or reduced, sustainable management of aquatic living sources, sustainable agriculture, agriculture and forestry, pollution reduced, Invasive alien species prevented and controlled, ecosystems vulnerable to climate change, protected areas, reducing risk of extinction, safeguarding genetic diversity, ecosystem services, ecosystem restoration and resilience, access and sharing, benefits from genetic resources, biodiversity strategies and action plan, traditional knowledge, sharing information and knowledge, mobilizing resources from all sources. Now the year 2020 is referred to as Super Year for Biodiversity because the strategic plan for which the 20 global IG targets were adopted in 2010 ends in 2020. And now all countries together are in the process of preparation for the post-2020 global diversity framework. Now COP11 of, of, to the CBD was held in Hyderabad, India. The most important outcome of the COP was commitment of the parties to double the international finance flow, finance flow for biodiversity by 2015. India instituted together with UNDP Biodiversity Governance Award at the COP. Now let's look at the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. CBD covers rapidly expanding field of biotechnology through its Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. It addresses technology development, transfer, benefit sharing, and biosafety issues. Now, for the biosafety protocols, it seeks to protect biological diversity from potential risks posed by living modified organisms, that is LMO. The two main sets of procedure under the protocol are Advanced Information Agreement and LMO intended for direct use as food or feed or for processing, that is LMO, FFP, and AIA. Now, under AIA, the LMO for which intentional release into the environment is intended must notify in writing the party of import before the first processed export takes place. Now, for LMO, FFP, risk assessment reports should be publicly available through Biosafety Clearinghouse. Now, Nagoya, Kala, Kuala Lumpur safety supplementary protocols on liability and redress reinforces the Cartagena protocol. The supplementary protocol specifies responses which must be taken in case of damage to biodiversity living, resulting from living modified organisms. Now, Nagoya protocol is a 2010 supplementary agreement to the 1992 convention on CBD. The Nagoya protocol is about access to genetic resources and fair and equitable sharing of benefits. The Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem, that is IPEPS, is an independent intergovernmental organization established by the member states in 2012. The objective of IPEPS is to strengthen the science policy interface for bio biodiversity ecosystem services for conservation, sustainable use, and long-term human well-being and sustainable development. Now, UNCC UNCCD, that is United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, was established in 1994. UNCCD is the sole legally binding international agreement which links environment and development to sustainable land management. Now, it is one of the Rio Convention that focuses on desertification, land degradation, and droughts in regions like Africa, Asia, Latin America, and Caribbean. Now, desertification is a type of land degradation in which the biological productivity of the land is lost due to natural process or induced by human activities, whereby fertility becomes increasingly arid. Now, UNCCD launched land degradation neutrality to conserve, sustainably manage, and restore land. 14th COP of UNCCD was held in New Delhi and adopted New Delhi declarations. Some of the uh, initiatives were International Coalition for Action on Sand and Dust Storms, that is SSD, Initiative of Sustainability and Stability and Security, that is 3S, and Youth Focus on Desertification and Land.
Let's move on to Ramsar Convention. The Ramsar Convention is an intergovernmental treaty that provides framework for national action and international cooperation for conservation through ecosystem approach and simultaneous sustainable use of wetlands and their resources. However, it is to be noted that under Ramsar Convention, there is no binding provisions related to the conservation of wetlands. It was adopted in the Iranian city of Ramsar in 1971, but it came in force in 1975. Now, it is the only global environmental treaty dealing with a particular ecosystem that is wetlands. Ramsar is, however, not affiliated with the United Nations. The parties to the Ramsar Convention commit to working together to the wise use of wetlands. Identify suitable wetlands to be listed under baseland, sorry, wetlands of international importance, that is the Ramsar list, and ensure their effective management. Now, international cooperation on transboundary wetlands is also one of the objectives that the Ramsar Convention commit to. Montrexu record is maintained as a part of Ramsar list. It is a list of wetlands of international importance where changes in the ecological character have occurred or are occurring or are likely to occur as a result of human interface. Now, Lake, Loktak Lake in Manipur and Keliado National Park in Rajasthan are two Montrex record sites in India. Now, Ramsar Convention partners are Wetland International, Wildfowl and Wetland Trust, World Wildlife Fund for Nature, International Water Management Institute, IUCN, and Bird Life International. Now let's move on to the Changwang Declaration on Human Wellbeing and Wetland highlights positive action for ensuring human wellbeing and security in future. Now let's move on to the Convention on Conservation of Migratory Species. It is also known as Bond Convention and it aims to conserve terrestrial, aquatic, and Indian migratory species throughout their range. Now it is an intergovernmental treaty concluded under the ages of UNEP, concerned with the conservation of wildlife and habitat on a global scale. Now CMS is the only global convention specializing in the conservation of migratory species, their habitats, and migration routes. Now let's look on the appendices of CMS. The first appendix relates to migratory species threatened with extension. The second appendix of the convention relates to migratory species that need or would significantly benefit for international cooperation. Now, Indian government signed the Raptor MOU on conservation of migratory birds of prey in Africa and Eurasia with CMS. However, the MOU is not legally binding. Coalition Against Wildlife Trafficking, that is CAWT, is a unique voluntary public-private coalition of like-minded governments and organizations sharing a common purpose, that is focusing public as well as political attention and resources on ending the illegal trade in wildlife and wildlife products. Now, the 13th COP of the Convention of Conservation of Migratory Species of Wildlife was concluded in Gandhi Nagar. India hosted the CMS COP for the first time. Now, CFP, C CMS COP 13 adopted Gandhi Nagar Declaration, which calls for migratory species and the concept of ecological connectivity. Now, the theme of CMS COP 13 was migratory species connect the planet and we welcome them home. Mascot was Jibi, the great Indian bustard. Now, let's move on to the Convention on International Trades in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Fauna, that is CITES. Now, CITES is an international agreement between governments, entered into force into 1975 and became the only treaty to ensure the international trade in plants and animals does not threaten their survival in the wild. It is a legally binding agreement. Now, CITES is administered through UNEP and a secretariat is located in Geneva. Now, there are three appendices to CITES. The first appendix mentions all the highly endangered species which are threatened with extension. Appendix 2 mentions those species that may become threatened, that may become endangered. That is, species not necessarily threatened with extension, but in which trade must be controlled in order to avoid utilizations incompatible with this survival. Now, Appendix 3 deals with those species that are protected by at least one country. Now, let's move on to the Vienna Convention. The Vienna Convention was in, adopted in the year 1985 and it entered into force in 1988. It acts as the framework for international effort to protect the ozone layer. Now, the Vienna Convention for Pro Protection of Ozone Layer and its Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layers are dedicated to the protection of Earth's ozone layer. It has 197 parties and is the first and only global environmental treaty to achieve universal ratification. Now, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change established an Ozone Sale and Steering Committee on the Montreal Protocol to facilitate implementation of the Indian country program for phasing out of ODS, that is, ozone depleting substances by 2010. Now, Kigali Amendment to the Protocol is a legally binding agreement under which parties are expected to reduce and the use of manufacture of HFCs, that is, hydrofluorocarbons, by roughly 80 to 85 percent from the respective baselines till 2045. HFCs, though a greenhouse gas is not dealt with under the Paris Agreement, but under Montreal Protocol. The Kigali Agreement for HFC reduction is legally binding on countries from 2019. However, developed and developing countries have different targets regarding their reductions in the use of HFCs. Now, let's move on to Minamata Convention. The Minamata Convention on Mercury is a global treaty to protect human health and the environment from adverse effects of mercury and its compound. It was agreed in the fifth session of Intergovernmental Negotiation Committee in Geneva and entered into force in August 2017. Now, controlling the anthropogenic release of mercury throughout its life cycle is one of the key obligations under the convention. The convention also addresses interim storage of mercury and its disposal in its disposal once it becomes a waste. Sites contaminated with mercury as well as health issues. Now, more than 140 countries, including India, have ratified the convention. Let's move on to Rotterdam Convention. It was adopted in September 1998 and came into force in 2004. The convention is jointly administered by UNEP and FAO, and it creates legally binding obligations for implementation of prior informed consent. Now, the objective is to promote shared responsibility and cooperative efforts among the parties and international trades of certain hazardous chemicals. Now, they also want to contribute to environmentally sound use of these hazardous chemicals by facilitating information exchange about their characteristics. The convention covers pesticides, industrial chemicals that have been banned or severely restricted for health or environmental reasons by the parties and which have been notified by the parties for inclusion in Annex 3 for the purpose of PIC procedures. Recently, two chemicals, that is pesticide 4 8 and the industrial chemical hexabromocyclodecadine, dodecadine, were added to the Annex 3 of the convention, making them subject to PIC procedures. However, which countries can decide? However, to which countries can decide on future imports of these chemicals. A Basel Convention 
deals with the transboundary movement of hazardous waste and their disposal and was adopted in 1989 and came into force in 1992. The objective of the convention is to protect human health and environment against the adverse effects of hazardous substances. In the scope and application covers wide range of waste defined as hazardous waste based on their origin, composition and their characteristics as well as two types of waste defined as other waste, household waste and incinerator ash are also included. The guiding principles of the convention are transboundary movement of hazardous waste should be reduced to a minimum, minimized at the source, managed in an environmentally sound manner, treated and disposed of as close as possible to their source of generation. Now, the regulatory system is the cornerstone of the basic convention based on the consent, concept of prior informed consent. Now, it also has a provision of written consent. Now, the waste covered by the basic conventions are lead batteries, persistent organic pollutants, polychlorinated biphenyls, chemical waste generated by industries, biomedical waste, and oils. That is used oils. The Basel Ban Amendments prohibits all export of hazardous waste, including electronic waste and obsolete ships from 29th wealthiest countries of OECDs to non-OECDs countries. India is yet to ratify the ban. During the conference of party to Basel Convention, that is COP14, following decisions were taken. Adoption of an amendment to include unsorted, mixed and contaminated plastic waste under PIC. Establishment of a partnership on plastic waste to encourage member countries to manage plastic waste in an environmentally sound manner. A provision for an adoption of technical guidelines on transboundary movement of e-waste and use electrical and electronic equipments. Now let's move on to Stockholm Convention. Stockholm Convention deals with persistent organic pollution pollutants. Now, for a chemical to be defined as POP, it should remain intact in the environment for a long period of time, become widely distributed geographically, and should accumulate in fatty tissues of human and animals, and have harmful impact on human health or environment. It calls for international action on three categories of POPs, that is pesticides, industrial chemicals, and unintentionally produced POPs. The POPs under Annex A of the Convention are to be eliminated. Under Annex B, the chemicals are to be restricted. Unintentionally produced POPs under Annex C of the Convention are to be restricted or eliminated. Now, the Convention requires parties to prevent the development of new POPs and promote the best available techniques, that is BAT, and best environmental practices, that is BEP, for replacing the existing POPs. Now, the Convention initially addressed 12 POPs known as the Dirty Dozen, but now 30 chemicals of global concern are listed under it. Now, during the conference of parties to the Stockholm Convention, that is COP9, it was decided to list diclofloc, dicofloc, dicofol, dicofol, and perfluoro. Per fluorooctanoic acid, that is PFOA, used in production of non-stick cookwares. It sorts PFOA-related compounds under Annex A of the Convention.